But this video is not going to be, this is not going to be a settings video. There's a million settings videos that talk about sensitivity and sound and video settings and all that. That's not what this video is. This video is the absolute essential necessary things that you are going to need to know to go from bad to decent. Basically, I wanted to make a video for anybody that is coming to play Warzone who's never played Call of Duty before. There are people like me who've been playing Call of Duty for 10 years plus at this point, and you are dropping into lobbies with guys like us. If you're anything like a lot of my friends that are hopping on and playing, you're probably pretty frustrated. It's not the easiest game to get the hang of. The absolute first thing that you are going to need to consider once you drop into Warzone is movement. Now, movement can be thought of in two different categories, the micro or the really tiny gunfight movements and the macro, which is moving around this massive map. I'm gonna start with gunfights. I know there are a lot of first person shooters where you don't have to pull the gun up to your face to fire it. This game, you have to, you absolutely have to if you're gonna get anywhere. I'm not gonna talk too much about gun skill. I feel like that's something that's just sort of learned over time. That's where this practice makes perfect thing comes in. I know that's super cliche, but you're just gonna get better as you go. I will say, spend some time on your sensitivity. Go to those practice modes and really figure out what you feel comfortable with. In gunfights, there are three rules that you should follow whenever possible. Rule number one, always keep high ground get on the tops of buildings, hills, wherever you can be above your enemy, you're taking the advantage. The second rule is don't be predictable. Your body is the target, and the more of your body they can see and shoot, the better chance there is that you're gonna get killed. Now there's a lot of options as far as being unpredictable. There's things like head glitches, if you don't know what a head glitch is, it's basically hiding behind something so only the top of your head is sticking out. On your screen, your gun will be over the edge of that ledge, but for the enemies looking at you, all they'll be able to see is your head. It is your most vulnerable spot, but it's also the smallest part of your body, so head glitching is always effective. The next part with predictability is peaking. If you're gonna make yourself vulnerable for an enemy because you need to look to see where they are, don't keep peeking the same spot over and over. What I mean is, if you fire at somebody from one spot, don't keep peeking that same side of the rock or the tree or the doorway or the building or whatever you're hiding behind. Try and find a way to run to another side. Be unpredictable. This game is so much about anticipation, anticipating where your enemies are gonna be, where they could come at you from, where you're gonna need to go based on the circle. Anticipation is everything in this game. And the last rule is be patient. If you've got a team pushing you, but you've got high ground, don't jump down there with them. Then they have the even playing field. You're probably gonna get smoked. Stay up high, wait for them to get antsy, wait for them to make a stupid move and then pick them off. The being patient part also pertains to buildings. If you see that a team is run into a building, don't follow that team to the building. Don't run in there thinking you're Rambo and that you're gonna just instantly know where everybody is and hold down your trigger and miraculously kill four people. That is not how this game works. Chances are they've gotten inside, they're camping in all the corners, they're fortifying the doors, they're laying claymores, they're sticking C4 to the wall, they're aiming their rockets at the doorways, and you're gonna be toast again. There's a lot of toast in this. The next really important thing that we need to talk about here is teamwork. Headphones and a microphone are a must. For this game. This game is very, very directional. From gunfire to footsteps to pings, everything is multi-directional. So if you've got a sound bar blasting every sound at your face, you're never going to know where anything is coming from. Use headphones. Same importance, you have to have a microphone if you are going to play. This game is all about communication. You're never going to get to those final circles unless you can communicate and tell your team what you're thinking. There's a really handy ping system in this game. You'll be able to ping a location so your other teammates can see where either people are or the direction you're moving or you can ping cars, buy stations, that kind of thing. 
utilize this ping and always back it up with some sort of verbal acknowledgement of what you're pinging. It gets really confusing, especially if you're in the heat of battle. If you double tap that ping, it's going to ping red, which indicates that there is an enemy there. If you single tap on an enemy while you're aimed down the sights and you can see the enemy, it will put what's called a live ping above their head, which will give you a few seconds of actually being able to see where that character's running. If you do get a live ping, don't re-ping them because it'll just set a dead ping and your team won't be able to see where this character's gone. I want to take a second to talk about hit markers because I understand that Sometimes it's really hard to tell where a team is shooting at you from, and it's really easy to panic, spin around in circles, and just get hammered. Not this kind of hammered, the bad kind. So let's talk about hit markers on you. An enemy is shooting at you, you can't figure out where they're coming from. You'll notice a little circle around your screen as you're getting hit, and it's gonna show little red sort of wound marks, well, those wound marks are actually pointing at the direction that the bullets are coming from. If you're getting hit from multiple directions, you'll see multiples pop up. This will give you the opportunity to spin, ping where you're getting shot from, and lay down and heal. By heal, I mean put new armor plates in, let your health regenerate. Your health will naturally regenerate. Armor is your only effective way of healing yourself in this game. By default, you can carry five armor plates. If you pick up an armor satchel, you can carry eight armor plates. If you've got five plates and you see somebody running around on your team that has no armor, drop them a couple plates. Do, do the right thing. This is definitely a teamwork game, which kind of brings me to the macro side of movement. I want to talk about circle movement. As a team, it is going to be your job to land somewhere and navigate to the final circle. You'll start to pick up little inklings of where people drop a lot. Boneyard is hot. Superstore is very hot. TV station's hot. Prison is always hot. Airport is hot. Basically, all the places that have a lot of loot right off the bat, those hot drops tend to be places where the better players drop because they want to have the opportunity to get into gunfights early in the game. This does a number of things. It gives you the opportunity to not only get your gun game up, kind of get that adrenaline pumping, but you can also get a lot of money. Try and plan your route early. Pop that map open, talk to your teammates, figure out what looks like a good route before you just loot until the storm touches you. Loot quickly. Keep your head up. The more you're looking down at these boxes, trying to figure out if you're gonna pick up this gun or that gun, or should you have a dead silence or a recon, somebody could be bursting in that room firing at you or firing at your teammate. Looting enemies is always going to be 10 times more beneficial than looting boxes because enemies will drop everything you need, all the ammo and money and new guns. As soon as you feel like you've got a good comfortable gun in your hand, loot the enemies, not the boxes. So when somebody dies, they drop all their loot, they will drop money, but money is a very interesting addition to the Call of Duty Battle Royale. You'll find money on the ground or in boxes or from dead people. And that money can buy you some pretty cool things like self revives. so if you get downed, you can heal yourself. Uh, UAVs, which allow you to see everybody on the map that doesn't have ghost on. Uh, precision airstrikes, so if you're pinned down by a sniper team, you can just drop an airstrike on them to more than likely just get them to run away. Or from contracts. There are contracts that you can do, they're involuntary, no, they're voluntary, they're optional. That's the word I'm looking for. You do not have to pick up contracts. You do not have to complete them, but each one has their own little benefit. The little flag is called a recon. It basically puts this little computer box that you have to secure down on the ground somewhere. And when you go there and you secure that position, you basically just sit in this very small area for about 30 seconds and it'll drop a bunch of armor plates and uh, gear for you, but what it'll also do, if you open your map, it will show you the next uh, circle closure. It's called a circle peak. And so this will give you an idea of where the next circle is going to close. The cool thing about recons is if you do about five or six of them, it'll show you each progressive circle getting smaller so you can have a kind of a pre-planned route of how you're going to get there with your team. 
There is kind of a middle ground of movement where you might not be in a gunfight, but you might also be running from the storm or trying to get to that next circle. This movement is more important than you might think. It's running from one place to another. Now you can do this in vehicles or you can do this on foot. I tend to not use vehicles. The reason I don't use vehicles is they're very loud. They show up red on the map. Everybody can see where you're going and you sort of show up and announce where you are and you have no idea where anybody else is. They're also very easy to destroy. If you are running from one place to another, make your most vulnerable spot the least easy thing to hit. Think about it. Look at all the high points on the map and figure out where people could be before you make that run. Buildings are never safe and it's just created a lot of... Uh, sniper towers and camper nests, if there is such a thing. Always be weary if you are near buildings. <laughs> Always be weary. Just be weary all the time. That's, that is, can't be overstated enough. Never let your guard down in this game. Do not stand still. There's somebody like me with a thermal scope on their sniper and they're probably aiming at you just waiting for that moment for you to stand still. Don't stand still in this game. There is run, and there's tactical run, right now. and there's sliding. One of my favorite things to do is put a thermal scope on an HDR and wait for teams to run across a big open map. Now the guys that are running just straight, just sort of jogging, are so easy to hit. You can pop them once in the head, they go down, you pop them again, they're done. Now the people that are slide canceling or at least juking around a little bit are much harder to hit. This kind of goes back to the be unpredictable thing from earlier. This is what I'm gonna recommend to you. Not only should you be sliding in the middle of your run, run, slide, run, slide, run, slide, maybe jump every now and then. Seems like a no brainer, but most people don't do this. This will help you immensely. The other thing you need to think about is running from cover to cover. Before you just run out into the middle of an open field, figure out what is something you can hide behind if somebody starts firing at you along the way. Chances are, like I said, there's 150 people on this map. Somebody's probably looking at you. Classes. There's a million videos on classes and which ones are the best and you're going to see updates happening on a weekly basis where they either nerf guns or they buff guns, make them weaker or make them stronger. So there's never going to be the perfect class that works all the time. I would say find a gun that you're comfortable with and stick to it. There's absolutely no harm in this. There's no reason to keep switching guns, but there are a few key things that you should always have in your loot drops. Always keep C4, always keep C4. You can throw it pretty far, the blast radius is huge, and anything but the Berthas, the big truck, will blow up with one C4. The Berthas take two, you can stack two C4s so you can throw two. Pro tip, if you double click your, what is that button, your reload button? For me it's square on PS4, this button. It's actually a faster way to explode it. So if you see a vehicle coming at you, Throw that C4 out there, double click your button, popcorn the whole truck, collect the loot, and keep moving. The next thing you should have in almost every class is cold-blooded. What this is gonna do is it's going to greatly diminish your visibility for snipers with thermal scopes. Now, I love a thermal scope because it gives you this bright white guy running around on a dark gray background. You're incredibly easy to see. You can see people from six, seven hundred meters away. It's super easy and really satisfying to pick off those people that don't have cold blooded on from disgusting distances. It's so much fun. That's why I always wear cold blooded because I do not want to be one of those guys. You should have at least a 50 round mag, 50 to 60 round mag on your main gun. Um, it takes a lot of bullets to kill people in this mode, especially if they've got full armor, which they almost always do. And you, you're you not gonna have a lot of time to reload, especially if you're playing in trios or quads where you've got three or four guys that you've gotta be firing at. You really need those large clips. If you don't have the, the larger ammo unlocked yet, 
the option for it, throw sleight of hand on there as your perk. That'll make the reload time a lot quicker. In the beginning of the game, I would definitely say throw a heartbeat sensor in your class. This will give you sort of your own personal small UAV where you can see anybody that doesn't have Ghost on. Ghost is also a really handy class to have. Most people early in the game are, are going to get what's called their overkill class, which means you can carry two primary weapons on you. You can have a sniper and an AR or an SMG and an AR or an LMG. You, you can have two primary weapons, so you're not running around with a little handgun. You can either have Ghost or you can have overkill. So it's have really good weapons, but be visible to UAVs, or have maybe one of the stock weapons that you find in a loot crate as your backup to your AR. First thing most teams do is try and find $10,000. They'll buy a loadout drop, they'll buy their overkill class, and then wait for their free loadout drop to drop and then they'll grab their ghost class from there. Your perks are always going to depend on the most recent class you've equipped. Don't think that if you got your ghost class the first time and then you pick out your overkill class on the second loadout drop, that it's gonna stack those perks. Those perks are canceled out and you've got the newest perks on from the most recent class you've got. Late game classes, I would almost always recommend having your guns equipped with fully loaded as your perk. That's going to make sure that you've got absolutely full ammo. As those circles get smaller, there are more people in a very confined space. You're going to need ammo late game. Sometimes you can run two or three kills in a game and pick up five or six in that final circle by itself. I would also recommend either stuns or flashes or smoke grenades as opposed to a heartbeat sensor late game because like I said, most people at that point have equipped their ghost class. Even if they've dropped back from the gulag or they've been bought back by their teammates, there's a loadout drop that drops late game where most people are gonna go get their ghost class. Which means put that ghost class on. You do not wanna be the one guy running around in your squad that doesn't have ghost class that's showing everybody with a UAV exactly where your team is. If you all run around with Ghost, no one knows where you are unless they see you. Early game, the things to spend your money on at buy stations. UAVs, self revives, and a loadout drop. Get your loadout drop, get your guns early, get your UAV, figure out where the teams are around you. I would not recommend buying a gas mask, You'll probably find one on some dead player later in the game. Never buy a shield turret. That's the most pointless thing that they put in this game. Now the things to buy late game are UAVs, still good. Again, there might be that guy that came back from the Gulag who doesn't have his ghost class on. That'll give you a good indication of where teams might be. Definitely get a self revive. Most often than not, they're wasted. Most people will thirst you because if you're down, you can still ping where the enemies are. You have the opportunity to pick yourself back up. Self revives are really, really handy late game. And then the last thing I would say to buy are precision airstrikes or clusters. As that circle gets smaller, those become more effective. There's usually less things to hide behind, and sometimes you just need an opportunity to distract the hell out of whoever's firing at you so you can reposition find that high ground and have a better opportunity to finish that game with a war zone victory. I really hope this video was helpful. I'm sure I left a million things out. If I did, or if there's something that you're just dying to know or wanna get my thoughts on, please leave it in the comments section. I'm very responsive. As always, I am on Twitch at twitch.tv slash comicroomgaming from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays right now. I will see you guys in the Gulag. Shit, I forgot to talk about the Gulag. Maybe on the next video.